of the things we're looking at here is, is the Shirley Basin is part of the uh, what we refer to as the sagebrush sea of, of, uh, of central Wyoming. And, and what that is, is this, this vast, vast space of, of sagebrush habitat, which is, which is critical to species like, like sage grouse, which uh, um, are, are what we call sagebrush obligates. Uh, they require sagebrush to survive. But pronghorn antelope, you know, another species that, that lives out here and relies on sagebrush as, uh, as part of their winter feed and cover. Uh, so many species of birds, sage thrashers, uh, sage sparrows live here, brewer sparrows, many, many species of birds uh, require this habitat. We started the BioBlitz this year because of our concern for the sagebrush steppe ecosystem. It's an imperiled ecosystem here in Wyoming and throughout the West. And we were really concerned about, you know, the energy boom cycle that's going on. So we planned this BioBlitz. So one, we could inventory the species and see what's really out here. The data for the BioBlitz that we collected here in this 24-hour period will be given to the land managers so that they can take it and say, wow, well, we didn't know that this was out here, we didn't know this many were, uh, species of X was out here, and maybe adjust their management that way. It gives them a good baseline. It also will help us establish future monitoring. Here we've had some surprises this weekend as far as insects and some birds and mammals. We're about to go out and check right now. Caught a dozen small mammals, uh, all deer mice, um, and while we were out there we also um, saw prairie dogs, uh, Wyoming ground squirrels, and uh, cottontail rabbit, and jackrabbit, um, and we saw a lot of signs of other things. Well, we just found uh, northern leopard frogs, and uh, there was a couple of uh, greater shorthorn lizards that were found. and. There's a few more things that, that you know, could be in the area. Right, we set traps out in this pond to look for uh, aquatic reptiles and amphibians. Um, we expected maybe we might find some tiger salamanders, so we uh, set out these uh, funnel traps. Um, we don't bait them with anything. You merely just place the traps out into the pond. This is a tiger salamander here. Um, they're fairly common in the area. So this is a malaise trap that we've used to passively sample the insects in the area. The insects fly into it and wander up into our uh, chemical trap where they're killed and we wind up with a very large sample of, of various insects. It's an excellent way of passively collecting insects over a long period of time. As far as why we want to survey insects as a part of the BioBlitz, Insects occupy the base of an ecosystem. They're the pollinators, they're one of the smallest predators and some of the smallest prey. And so it's very important when looking at an entire ecosystem to understand what insects are present because they're, they're such an important part of the ecosystem. Um, without the insects in the ecosystem, the ecosystem would completely fail. So many of the people that came out with us today were so excited about um, seeing what they could see. Uh, and the kids are great, and, and, and dealing with the kids is always wonderful. And, and if you can instill in them um, an appreciation for this type of landscape and appreciation for these types of animals, then that's what's going to ensure the, the long-term preservation of this stuff. Because we're only going to be around for so long. <laughs> now we just drive down the road and we, we, we see these wide open spaces and we don't ever a lot of times we don't have the time just to stop and take a look and, and just take an inventory of what, what really is here. It's, I've just heard, wow, I never realized how many beautiful wildflowers are here or I didn't realize there's such a variety of songbirds. Um, and so it's been really fun to be able to, to have the, the, um, the community members come out here and, and, and see what uh, variety, what sort of diversity is here. Well, like many people, we're concerned about how things are headed, both because of climate change long term and uh, short term more acute impacts of, of not just um, you know, fossil fuel energy development, but wind development and things like that as well. So there are a lot of reasons, for example, like we hear a lot about sage grouse, but a few other things. And so these are threatened ecosystems and um, aside from the fact that the kids are fascinated by them, they understand that they're threatened too. And so they're, they're concerned and the more we come out here, the more um, they're going to grow up thinking we've got to protect these kinds of places. <laughs>